Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. Let's talk V-Ray proxy items. So here we've got a crab. And as you can see, it's a very dense polygon crab. It's been scanned in. There's a lot of polygons, over a million. And that makes it a good candidate for a V-Ray proxy item. So what are the benefits of a V-Ray proxy item, you might be asking? Why would I want to do this? Well, there's three things in particular. One is going to speed up your viewport performance because it's essentially going to take all this uh, geometric data, all this high density geometric data, and it's going to offload it into onto a file on your hard drive, which it will then read back into memory when it's rendering. But in the meantime, it's going to replace it by a low res proxy uh, polygon object, maybe five or 10% of the number of polygons. You'll still be able to see it in a scene and it'll be fine, I'll show you in a minute but it really improves viewport performance, especially if you have a lot of these things, like a whole herd of crabs or a forest full of trees, for instance, it's going to be a lot better for you. It's also gonna reduce the amount of RAM that your scene requires by offloading all this data onto the hard drive. And of course, it's going to make your LXO scene file smaller as well. So instead of having to load up a giant gigabyte size scene file with a forest full of trees that are all in the scene file, it'll load up a much smaller scene file with all the trees referenced as external files. So those are all the benefits of the V-Ray proxy items. There's a few others which I'll show, which mean you know you can swap them out with other ones really easily. You could also, uh, you can duplicate and replicate these guys just like you would with any sort of uh, moto mesh. And um, you can also do some things with the animation that are pretty nice. So let's take a look. Let's select our crab here. You'll notice the ghost crab up here in the item list. That's going to be the name of the file on disk, ghostcrab.vrmesh. If you want a different name, you can uh, rename it over here, or of course you can rename the mesh later. Up here in V-Ray dropdown, we have the convert to V-Ray proxy. That's what you want. Let's select that, and we have this requester here. So, a couple things. If this is the first time you did this in this scene, it's going to ask you for a file location. I've already converted at least one item in the scene, so it's just going back to that uh, first location specified. There is no browse button, oddly, so I can't just switch file locations without typing in a new location or copy and pasting it from Explorer or Finder or whatever. So that's a little odd. Um, export type, so I can do a separate VR mesh file for each item or a single VR mesh file. Well, that's interesting because what I can do is I can actually grab multiple items. So if I wanted to grab the ghost crab and the ground and the water all at once, and export them as to one big blob of a file. I can go you know, to a combined VR mesh file, or I can just um, do them all at once and it'll spit out three different files based on the name of, in the item list. So a ghost crab VR mesh, ground VR mesh, and water VR mesh. So you can automate this if you're doing a bunch of trees at once or whatever, it's really nice. I need to have override existing files checked if I already have a ghost crab VR mesh um, written, which I do because I've done a test scene with this. It, again, it acts a little non-standard. If I don't have that checked, it's going to just not allow me to overwrite it. It's not gonna say, do you want to overwrite the file like you would if you're trying to save over an image or something? It just won't do it. So you wanna have that checked if you already have one in there. Um, animation I'll get to in a minute. It will export polygon tags automatically so you can have the uh, textures appear in the right places. If you want to export part tags or selection set tags and perhaps use those later on, you can do that as well. If you check these, it's not checked by default, so it will um, save on some memory there. Um, you know, the sub D cage or the ratio of faces in preview, this is going to be the amount of polygons in the proxy item that it replaces your crab with. So 10% of a million is about 100,000. I can drop that down even more to 5%. Again, you gotta be a little careful in these dialogues because if I hit return, it's gonna actually just start going. So I'm gonna tab my way out of that. Um, faces per voxel, it does a sort of a voxelization as well if you'd like to for the proxy item. And you can control that here. And the auto create V-Ray proxy items. This is not typically checked by default, but what this is going to do is if you don't have it checked, it's just gonna create a file on your hard drive. Uh, if I want it checked, it's going to replace this in the scene with the V-Ray proxy item, which is nice. So that, I'm actually going to do that. Hit OK, and it's going to start writing that file to my hard drive. And then you're going to see this mesh item here replaced by a V-Ray proxy item. And there it is. So this is a V-Ray proxy item. It renders just the same. You can see the rendering updating. And over here you have a path to the mesh file, right? Right there, crab, ghost crab dot VR mesh. Pretty cool, and down here you see a much lighter polygon version of my crab. I can still tell what it is. It's crab, pull back, it's crab. Um, but it's much lighter and it's gonna be much faster. Again, if I had a whole bunch of crabs, a whole pack of crabs, then uh, this would be important, especially with trees. Um, I can also do things like duplicate this. If I just want to control D duplicate this, I can duplicate it like any other item. 
and I can transform it if I want, you know, move it back here. Now I've got a couple of them in the scene. Let me just pull back my camera a bit. Now I've got a couple of ghost crabs in the scene. Pretty cool, right? So I can also instance these and I can also replicate them along points. So they act much like uh, typical mesh items, but they're V-Ray proxy items. What's also nice, like I mentioned earlier, I can actually just go in and switch this out by pointing to another file. You'll notice here I've got, um, it does, like I said, it brings those material tags into the V-Ray proxy item. I will not be able to see them in info statistics. There is no indication of what material tags are in there. So I have to know what's in there, and I'll get back to this a little bit later. So if I just do like a, a region render, I'll show you. Um, if I, the eye stocks here, if I change the color here, you'll see that that does, you know, register in the V-Ray proxy item. Like that. So it can change my colors. But if I do something like import a V-Ray proxy item, I'm not going to get the shader tree nodes by or layers by um, default. And I'll show you how to deal with that in a minute. So like I said, I can I can convert this guy or switch this guy out to something else. I can just browse and, and pick my elbow crab VR mesh here and bring it in. And it just points to that file. So let me take off region rendering. Now I've got the ghost crab and the elbow crab, which is a really weird looking dude, in the same scene. And it was just a matter of replacing the, uh, or pointing to a different file, which is pretty cool. So if I want to change an oak tree to a cherry tree, point it to a different file. Really easy if you're creating a forest. Now, you'll notice that it did not bring in any of the ghost crab materials. Now, but the polygon tags are still there. I just can't see them here, right? So I will show you, let me just prove to you that they're here. I'm going to add a group, and then I'm going to say material uh, elbow crab legs. So it does see that they're in the scene. I just don't see them in the info list. And then, of course, I can um, you know add a material here, like a V-Ray material. Boom. And change the color of those guys. Turn yellow, and you can see that it's, it's working, but I don't get those imported in the scene. So if I were to do something like, again, whoops, if I want to, uh, let me just stop my render here. And if I want to do add item, and we can start typing in V-Ray proxy, there it is. So I can bring in a V-Ray proxy item like this. And this is just a blank container. This is just a container. I can point it to whatever I want to. And we just go to my browse here. I'll say I want to bring in another ghost crab mesh or an elbow crab mesh. Um, it's going to bring it in right there at 000. But again, it's not going to bring in the shader tree with it. This I had there you know, previously. Um, and there's at least one other material tag in there. So what you can do in this case, and this is the way I'd recommend working. This is the reason I'm showing you all this stuff. If I go over here to my elbow crab scene, here's my elbow crab. And uh, I'll just go ahead and start the V-Ray render here. And it's already converted to a proxy item. So you can see there's the you know decimated mesh, and it's a just a V-Ray proxy item here in the list. And I've got my a couple different materials here. I have the, the legs and the body, a red on the body and a green on the legs. So what I can do is just save this you know scene as a LXO. And if I want to bring those into the ghost crab scene, so I go back to my ghost crab scene up here and uh, it's going to take a second as it has had the renderer going, so it's going to start rendering right away. And we just um, stop the renderer, and I'm going to delete my V-Ray proxy item, my ghost crab item here, that are basically the two elbow, elbow crabs are pointing to the elbow crab files. And so I'm just back to Mr. Ghost Crab. I'm going to delete this elbow crab guy in the shader tree. So if I import that LXO, it's going to bring in the Elbow Crab LXO, it's gonna bring in the V-Ray proxy item and the shader tree material. So you see it right there. There's my two shaders. And here is my Elbow Crab proxy item. It will bring in the lights and camera, which I can delete. And as we all know, it always brings in the environment, as annoying as that may be. <laughs> Kick the Elbow Crab environment out, since we already have an environment. Um, but that's, that's the way I'd recommend prepping your V-Ray proxy items is Get all the texturing done first, and we'll just uh, start this up here. Get all the texturing done first, um, you know, save your scene, then convert it to your mesh to a V-Ray proxy item, and save that scene as a, you know, you know, V-Ray proxy.lxo. And that way you can bring in all the shader tree material at once. So if I had prepped a bunch of trees or a bunch of other crabs, I wouldn't really just open up 
uh, add new V-Ray proxy items to the item list and then point to the files, unless I already had the materials in the shader tree, I'd probably import the LXO with the V-Ray proxy and the shader tree materials in it. Okay, I think we're all on the same page there, I hope. Got all that. Let's take a look at an animated scene really quickly. This scene right here is a pelagic stingray. A stingray that lives way out in the middle of the open ocean. They're kind of cool animals. And it has quite a bit of uh, deformation animation going on there. It has these magnet deformers going around, creating this rippling effect. Pretty neat. Well, what if I want to create a V-Ray proxy out of this guy? Um, pretty easy, actually. Do the same thing. You select it, and up here in V-Ray, and the v convert to V-Ray proxy. Turn on animation. So you have some options here. It'll actually save some uh, velocity with the, uh, basically, the velocity uh, delta with the points um, in the scene file. So it'll, it'll be able to render with motion blur, which is pretty cool. Or you can do animation without velocity, which is not going to save that extra data. So you won't be able to do motion blur. You can also do scene range, current range, or specify range for the animation, uh, the number of frames you want. And of course, auto create vox, uh, proxy items is good if you want to replace that in your scene with the uh, instead of just writing a separate file to disk, it'll write the file and then replace your file or your mesh item in the scene. So I actually already did this, I believe. So I'm going to I'm just going to add a V-Ray proxy item to the scene, and then I'm going to point to my uh, Stingray VR mesh and open that up. And I'm going to hide my original Stingray mesh, and here you'll see the proxy item here. And you'll notice the animation, and it's super fast. So basically what it's doing is I, I believe it's including an Alembic uh, file in, in the v, uh, VR mesh file. It's wrapping up an Alembic file in there for the actual animation. You see that coming by really quickly there. Pretty cool. Um, you can also do some things like uh, you know ping pong the animation if you want. It should theoretically head backwards. Maybe you have to restart it. <laughs> so we'll see. Yeah. Maybe you have to change the settings, but you have some, uh, oh, maybe you have to do that. So yeah, you have some sequence start length and uh, start and length and things like that. So we can change those around and uh, ping pong settings. And there's some, some nice um, parameters here for the Alembic proxy item. Uh, so that is, again, a really nice way of speeding it up. Because if I hide this guy and turn on my V-Ray, or I'm sorry, my, my rigged item, you know, it's calculating all those deformations on a sub-D mesh um, in real time, and it's very pretty slow. There's a lot going on there. There's a lot of bones, a lot of magnet deformers. But by caching that into a V-Ray proxy item, a VR mesh that's wrapping it up on a Lumbic uh, point cache file in there, it goes super fast, right? So if, again, if I have a whole school of stingrays, then I'm going to want to, you know, maybe set everything up and then you know turn them into VR uh, V-Ray mesh files uh, V-Ray proxy mesh files and bring those in um, my scene like this so of course I can't edit the animation or anything like that but at this point in the process before rendering um, you may not want to so I can you know create a particle system and I can in instance these items to particles or you know whatever I want to do and uh, have a whole school which I believe is the proper uh, plural of a bunch of stingrays <laughs> as a school of stingrays so hopefully that covers it um, and I will be doing more V-Ray tutorials in the future thank you yum yum